Hey kids, welcome back. Here is part two of the lesson two video that has the back side of our page in the problem set uh, or learn book. And so just a review in case you didn't see the first video. In this activity, we are taking a fraction and breaking it into equal parts with uh, the extras on the side. So it's two or three equal parts if you can and using a number line to do this and show our work. And then we also are expressing things as uh, a multiplication equation. So, hey, focus. <laughs> hey, there we go. All right, yay. Uh, express this as an addition equation and a multiplication equation. That's what we're doing today. So if I have two times three eighths, then I would have three eighths twice, okay? Uh, plus the one eighth on the side and then Three plus three is six plus one is seven. That's how you get the seven eighths. So enough of that. See the previous video to get all those notes and more. And more. That's right. So we're on number three starting here. Express each of the following as the sum of a whole number and a fraction and show parts C and D on number lines. So this is just a little bit different than on the previous page. The previous page, we were trying to show each fraction as the sum of two or three equal fractional parts. So we just did that with our two parts, or perhaps three parts, breaking up these numbers into even numbered pieces, if we could. And so uh, for this one, we're going to use a whole number and a fraction. So this is a little bit different, but I love this lesson. It's so, so important. So what happens when you have a whole number and a fraction is you're looking at this whole idea of an improper fraction and how it can be made of different parts. Now, what do I mean? So let's say there are nine sevenths. So there's a whole number in there. The whole number is going to be the value of one. The value of one would be seven sevenths. So remember on previous videos when I said any number over itself is equal to one, like two halves is equal to one, so is 10 tenths it's equal to one. One is one. It just means that if I have two parts, okay, out of two, that is the same thing as having 10 parts out of 10. It's the same thing as having seven parts out of seven. So if this is the whole number, I need to have the fractional pieces that would be over and above the seven sevenths. So if this makes one piece, but I need nine sevenths, I just need to come up with the two extra sevenths so that I can add those up, okay? So the whole number here is one plus two sevenths. So that's your whole number and a fraction, okay? Now let's take a look at this. Remember on the previous video, I said this little line here is a division sign. So let's take nine and divide by seven because we can, and you should know this. Every number that's in a fraction on top can be divided by the bottom number. So what would I get if I did this division problem? Nine divided by seven. Well, I could fit one seven into nine. When I multiply, I get seven. When I subtract, I get two. Huh. That is looking an awful lot like this. So what this is, is a division problem that can be shown with one and two sevenths or seven sevenths plus two sevenths or nine sevenths. So you can show it in different ways. Remember how I said this program likes you to look at something and then do it and then undo it and, and you're basically just rewriting it a whole bunch of times? That's really what we're doing here. So you're trying to show what the whole is, which is seven sevenths or one, and you're looking at the leftover parts, the remainder, and then this number is on your way to making another seven sevenths, okay? So one and two sevenths 
is what is equal to 9 sevenths. So all this is a little bit of extra stuff. They don't really get into this in the book, but I need you to know that because we're going to be talking a lot about improper fractions and switching them around to what is called a mixed number. And a mixed number, you should probably know that from fourth grade, but it would be 1 and 2 sevenths. And so that is your mixed number. So let's do this one as well with our sum of a whole number in a fraction. Now you know that this is a division sign, so 9 divided by 2. Well, that would give me 4, okay? Because 4 times 2 is 8, so I can get all the way up to 8 before I have to have this 1 half left. Again, if you need to see it, set it up with division, divide 9 by 2, get the 4, multiply for the 8, see that there is 1 left, your remainder is what goes in the top of the numerator for the next one. Okay? So this is now the sum of a whole number and a fraction. So that's where you can leave that. This is really the answer. This is also the answer. Same thing, four and a half. You can do both. Okay? Next one. 32 divided by seven, or how many sevens can you fully get into 32? So you're doing division. You can get four whole sevens because four times seven is 28. Now the difference between 28 and 32 is what? That's right, four. So then you would put that as your remainder. So four plus four sevens. Now it also says you need to show part C on a number line. So if you make your number line going on forever in both directions, then how would I make this? Well. Each one is divided into seven parts, and I need to get past four, so four and more. I don't have quite enough for five. So if this is zero, and I need to get all the way to five, I need to make room for that. So one, two, three, four, five. Put your whole numbers on top. One, two, three, four, five. Now, what is the count for one? Well, because each one is in seven pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here is seven sevenths. Now, I always go ahead and fill all in the tick marks um, when I'm working with my students in class, just so everybody can remember that there are seven pieces for each one. 8 sevenths, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 sevenths, because remember what I said, and here it ties all together, 14 divided by 7 is 2. That's why this tick mark has a value of 2, and it also has a value of 14 sevenths. Let's do that again. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 sevenths. 21 divided by 7 is 3, and so on. Now, if we have four plus four sevenths, what I need to do is I need to get all the way over to the four, and then I need four of the sevenths. So from here, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is gonna be the seven sevenths, so there's six ticks, tick marks in between. What would be the value of the fraction, the improper fraction here that has a value of four? 28 sevenths. How about this one? And you might notice that, yep, you're counting by sevens on the top. 7, 14, 21, 28. What's next? That's right, 35 sevenths. So now that I've gotten my four, I just need four more sevenths. One, two, three, four. Put a dot, hop over. This is the four sevenths. And so this is showing on the number line four and four sevenths. Okay, I hope that this is kind of starting to click because usually at about this point, everybody's like, oh, oh my gosh, it kind of makes sense. Now, how about 24 divided by nine or 24 ninths? How many full nines are in 24? Well, you can't get three because that's 27. So you're gonna say two. And then how many are left over between 18, which is two nines and 24? And then you might say six, six ninths are left over. So if I have my 
uh, sum of a whole number and a fraction, and I need to show this on a number line. Okay, all my number lines are always the same size, but the tick marks in between can vary. Okay, now I need ninths, but how many do I need? I need two whole plus extra. So I really just need zero. I need up to three, okay? One, two, three. So how do you decide, Mrs. Etnes? Whatever your whole number is, and a little bit more, you need that next whole number. So whole number, next whole number, because I'm gonna be putting little tick marks in here. So I need this two, so you can hop right over. You don't have to labor over the tick marks here. But I do need to put the ninths in between two and three. So this is one, two, three, four, five should be roughly halfway, six, seven, eight, and then this would be the nine ninths or the whole, okay? But it's not nine ninths because again, this is nine ninths, this is 18 ninths, and this would be 27 ninths because we're counting on the number line. So out of the tick marks, this is the ninth one. I'll erase it so it doesn't confuse you, but you do have to know that it has to be eight marks in between because the ninth one is here. I hope that's clear. So now that we have our two full whole numbers, we need six more ninths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then hop around, and that's your six ninths. Okay? So, yay, we're almost done. Okay, now the last question here, nice word problem for you. Maricela cut four equivalent lengths of ribbon. Each was five eighths of a yard long. How many yards of ribbon did she cut? Express your answer as the sum of a whole number and the remaining fractional units, the sum of a whole number and a remaining fractional units, just like we did up above, and draw a number line to represent the problem. So if we have our ribbon, okay, and it's four pieces, always watch out for word form of numbers, four pieces. Each one was five eighths of a yard long. Five eighths looks like this. So how many did she cut? Four. This is what you might want to write, okay, for your fractions showing the four ribbons. So we need to show this or express it as the sum of a whole number and the remaining fractional units. The sum of a whole number and the remaining fractional units. Let's add them up. 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay? So if I have all these eighths, I have 20 eighths. So how many eighths as a whole number, how many eighths do I have that can fit into 20? 20 divided by 8. 2. That's my whole number, plus what's left over. So eight times two is 16. The, the leftovers make that remainder that goes to the numerator from the previous problems, remember? So the difference between 16 and 20 is four. And then we always have eighths because in adding and subtracting with fractions, you have to keep the denominator the same. It's telling you the number of pieces. Okay, so I have two plus four eighths or two and four eighths. And how many yards of ribbon did she cut? That's going to be yards. Label it yards. And now we have to show it on a number line. Draw a number line. Okay, you can make it nice and big if you want because we have lots of room. And so I need to get two and four eighths. Zero, one, two, three. Have a little extra there. That's okay. So I need two and four eighths. So if this is the halfway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember the eighth tick mark is already there. So I have two plus four eighths, one, two, three, four. Hop around, put your dot right there on the halfway, and you see that you have two and four eighths, which is also, strangely enough, halfway in between two and three. 
So one other thing that you can also say, I think the book doesn't really get into equivalence yet, even though we're trying to make equivalence in lessons one and two. If you look at four eighths, know that four eighths is equal to half. We'll do more of this later. And so if you had two and four eighths yards, that's equal to two and a half yards. But for right now, I think this is what they want. Anyway, click subscribe, come back again. We will see you on the next video. We'll do no lesson three next. Bye for now.